Hello dear chess friends, welcome back to the channel and um, as you know the Chessable Masters is still going on and um, uh, the players are playing now in the uh, semi-finals and um, I'm going to analyze the game against one of the semi-finalists he came um, uh, so so uh, he's so far now and he qualified uh, from our group B and uh, his name is Anish Kiri I'm sure you know him. I know him very well as well. And um, I just want to see one game against him with Black that, um, that you know, I've played this opening in, in my childhood. And it's also one of the openings uh, from my very uh, distant uh, past. And so, um, very nice one. In general, I had a lot of good games in it and a lot of wins in the um, junior championships and so on. So um, before implementing the King's Indian, I've started with this opening and uh, I'm actually very happy that I've played all of this. Um, I mean, both of this kind of favorite openings uh, uh, in this tournament and uh, brought me some kind of memories because I've, I've seen the structure and was looking at it now as well, analyzing the game. So um, just nice memories. So let's see what happened in the game. and. Let's analyze and see what kind of things white generally should do and black shouldn't, and um, what are the main main ways of playing it with, with both sides, very fast and uh, I mean on the basis of the game. So let's see what happened. So it started with d4, e6, c4, f5. There are different ways to get to the stone wall, uh, stone wall defense, but um, yeah. I mean, this is one of the ways. Another way is to play knight c3 or f3. Uh, g3 is the normal way. Um, so, I mean, there are so many, many ideas here in general that um, white can try. So g3, knight f6, bishop g2, d5. Sometimes black goes c6, uh, kind of uh, playing against the idea of knight h3, bishop f4, because of some after some knight h3, there are some kind of ideas like this sometimes here. But, uh, okay, d5 is the most natural, more normal, generally, everyone plays like this. And uh, one of the ideas here is to go knight at h3, c6, castle short, bishop d6. And then white goes for bishop f4, black sometimes even plays bishop e7, knight d2, castle short, this, some knight e4, things like this. Uh, big line as well, and very playable for both sides, uh, with uh, slight preference to white but very practical from black's point of view there is like i mean of course black doesn't want to take this because knight f4 the knight will go to f3 and the other one to d3 then will they will try to get control over e5 and play on the queen's flank so in the game anish went knight f3 c6 castle short bishop d6 there is also a way to play bishop f4 here but then you have to be ready for this structure um then castle short Black goes again for queen e7, knight e4, knight d7. Uh, for example, if all the knight pairs are exchanged here, so we don't have knights anymore, uh, the white will per certainly go for some e3, then play on the queen's flank again with b4, a4, b5. Uh, black, uh, on the other hand, will just start to play on the king's flank with king h8, sometimes g5. Uh, at first, maybe waiting for, for white to show what they're going to do there with some kind of bishop d7, a6, just keeping the structure closed. And, uh, well, threatening to play g5 or h6, g5 and play on the king's flank, somehow making it more nervous for white so that they're not able, you know, just simply to attack, you know, there on the queen's flank. And, yeah, I think it's around uh, dynamical equality, maybe. Maybe slightly better for white again. Um, we shouldn't forget that they have the control over the very important central square e5, which is kind of a very weak square for black. And um, they have some better communications there, you know, because of this uh, kind of space advantage. But it's playable for black. So Anish doesn't want to go to play it like this. He wants still to exchange the bishop, but not allowing the um, not allowing to spoil the structure there on the king's flank. So he does it in a very nice way, a known known way for for um, for many players. He goes for b3. So it's not the way uh, of playing knight to 3 g3 b3 and putting the knight on e5 and just playing it 
But the idea of this is this. So queen e7, um, not allowing still to play bishop a3. If white goes for some a4, which is also possible. Black here has more options because they can play for a5, b6. And after exchanging the bishop on a3, and uh, they can play either knight a6 before, or they can go knight d7, bishop a6. And then as the b3 pawn is kind of uh, blocked by this a5 standing, then it's not so easy to play before, and when it's not so easy to play before, there, is, there are not so many trumps for white. I mean, they have to attack on the queen's flank if they want to show the advantage and that they're better and play for a win. So this is not the usual, as I remember, recommended way to play. So the way to play is bishop b2, as Anish did, castle short, queen c1. I think somewhere here I played knight a4, knight a4 against Aronian in 2006 or something, and I've got a great position out of the opening, and uh, throughout the game I was having a nice position. He didn't play well some, somewhere in the opening, and uh, I got a good one. But uh, he could play better, of course, and uh, there are computer suggestions as well. So in this one I went b6, bishop a3. Now I went bishop b7. Uh, black can also try to take on a3, uh, try to put the knight in a bad position. But for example, if knight a3, they can go bishop b7 and try to play for fast knight bd7 and c5 maybe. Uh, if white takes with the queen... One, of course, c5 is possible, but c5, I'm afraid that uh, we will end badly in some, some positions, but here it's possible to play these end games. They are slightly worse, but not as bad as it looks at first sight, maybe. Uh, black can also go this, and then bishop b7, and so on. So, um, this was possible. One of the ways, I went bishop b7, bishop takes, queen takes, knight c3, normal way to develop, uh, supporting b4, queen b2, b4, playing according to plan. So now knight bd7. C takes d5. It's a possible move. I think maybe it's a bit better to play e3 immediately and then queen b2 without um, deciding the structure in the center right away. But c takes d5 is possible. Usually in these structures, you don't take with the c pawn. Almost always you take with the e. So uh, it wasn't a big question because after taking with the c, you more or less confirm this kind of structure. You, uh, you, know, you determine the structure in the center, then the bishop becomes very stupid on b7. And beside that, there are many communications and, you know, there are many routes for white spaces to um, to come into play here and, uh, you know, get use of those weak black squares in black's camp. So um, this is kind of not recommended to take with C. Usually, even in some positions, white puts the queen on C2 and um, they wait a bit, they play rook C1 or something. And at some point, at the nice moment, where they see that the f5 is hanging, they take d5, and you cannot take with the e pawn because f5 is hanging when the queen is on c2. So um, in this case, it's not like that, and I can take with e pawn. Of course, I take with e pawn, e3, knight e4, queen b2. Now I went rook a8. I think it was better to play a5, just uh, stopping before. And after rook c1, just play even rook a8 is possible here, but bishop a6 maybe just to put the bishop on a nice diagonal and um, have the better placement of the pieces than possibly rook c8 or rook a8. A8 maybe h6 g5 trying to play on the flank, <clears throat> kind of possible and uh, I'm protecting against before at the moment. If White goes for a3, I will always have the possibility to play a takes before after b4, put my bishop on c4, then support it with b5 uh, in some 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 cases, and um, this is what I want to achieve. So certainly a5 is better. But I somehow was uh, um, kind of excited about rook a8, bringing the rook on f6, playing g5, rook h6, mating immediately and so on. It was maybe too emotional. Rook c1 simply, rook f6, rook fd1. So white is preparing against any kind of c5s. Uh, now more or less they are blocking the center so that black can't move too much here. Because if you move in the center immediately, like with c5 or something, you will just get kind of d takes c5 and d5, c5 pawns, they will be destroyed. Uh, white can just go around and attack them from different sides and it will be very unpleasant for black and a lot of weaknesses and usually it's not moving anywhere forward, you know, it's just bad. So, after playing this, I decided that I have to go queen e7. Maybe in some cases I can play c5 or rook d6, c5 or something, or maybe supporting the kind of threats there with knight takes f2 and, uh, and things like this. Instead, of course, it was better to play e5 here, just protecting, as I told you just before, against b4 moves by white and uh, attacking the our structure there on the queen's flank. Then the nice idea that I've discovered when analyzing this position is queen c2 was shown by Compi. But at first I didn't understand it, but now it will be clear when I'll show you after queen c2. So for example, queen e7, knight a4. And now um, you would wonder maybe what's the idea, but like for after g5, but once it's knight e5, and if you take and take and take, takes here, 
the white is bare show you also the line now but um then you ask yourself okay but what's the point i mean why can't i play just queen d8 here protecting b6 but in fact the point of queen c2 is now visible i mean the point is that knight is coming to b2 and d3 so this is the way that's very nice i mean i just like so much this idea knight b2 and knight d3 this way so but first you play queen c2 and nobody understands what it is but if you know what you're doing it's just uh, just an amazing thing so after this just take 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 and black should already fight for some kind of uh, initiative i mean they, they have to do something otherwise they will be just lost in the end game or if something is exchanged it's just completely completely winning for white so after this queen e7 is normal knight a4 rook h6 maybe trying to play some kind of a four somewhere just you know complicate matters and uh, try some things practically practically it's a chance for black and position is not that clear here so <clears throat> instead i went queen e7 uh white went b4 of course b5 is coming now i went b5 stopping it otherwise b5 will just destroy my position a4 uh now compass suggestion was to play knight b6 which is maybe possible a b uh sorry a b knight c4 queen e2 let's say c takes b5 if now knight takes b5 then there is rook a6 queen somewhere rook b6 picking up the b4 and still yeah, it's even as you can see, it shows that black is okay here. Uh, instead of this, uh, knight e5 is stronger, much stronger, of course. Now, if black goes rook b6 to protect b5, attacking b4, maybe knight d3, and white is positionally much better, but practically, I don't know, maybe g5, maybe h5, h4, as Compi suggests. Practically, maybe playable for black. So, I think maybe knight b6 was kind of possible. I don't know. I mean, I didn't really consider this. I thought I'd have first to defend b5 and then go knight b6, c4. Yeah, but this this looks interesting from practical point of view, at least. I think it's the nice way. Bravo compi as usual. So a6 I went. Let's consider it a mistake because here he could uh, get an advantage with both ways. First is a5. Then just maneuver with the knight, maybe knight e2, f4, d3, or knight e2. Let's say rook c2, knight c1, d3, and um, some kind of stuff like that. And white is just better, you know. They will always play on the dark squares. Black will always have to think about the bishop, about the weaknesses here. They're not having the real counterplay here on the flank. I don't see how to create it. I've looked at different stuff here, but I didn't find. Yeah, I didn't find here. So after a5, I think. Um, black's position is a bit unpleasant. Maybe rook d6, knight e2, g5, like this. Kind of. Then again, rook c2, as I said. Maybe try to do something. I don't know. You want to do something. I mean, h5, maybe I don't know what. h5, can I go? h5, h4. And good luck. Okay, think like this. Yeah, rook h6, maybe. Rook dc1. Just maybe stay for black. But then white has also this kind of stuff. Sacrificing this one. Yeah, this and 94 maybe. Yeah, also kind of unpleasant. So yeah, I guess it was the way for white. But uh, very nice practical way, simple way to play. But uh, of course he was afraid of uh, kind of attack on the king's flank, that, that the flank is closed there, the queen's flank, and I will just attack on the king's flank. But in fact, he played also very practically. It was a, was a not so bad option anyway. So he went rook a1. Here I had knight b6 maybe, but I didn't consider because knight e5, knight c4, this kind of stuff I didn't consider at all with d takes c4. Just seemed to me a complete uh, disaster. Rook f7, I mean, things like this. D5 here is possible. Well, I mean, Black is defending by some miracle here, maybe, but you know what kind of position it is. Would seem just the time it's time to resign. But actually, Compi tries to save it, and it's not that bad. Okay, was possible. I didn't see it at all. I went queen d6 to go queen b8 and protect the bishop. He went rook a7, queen b8, rook a1, knight b6. Now threatening knight a4 somewhere to win the exchange. Uh, he went knight e5. Instead, he could go, for example, queen c1. Positionally takes, takes, play this, and then just sacrifice the um, sacrifice the exchange. White is certainly not risking anything. Uh, they're just having much better position. Maybe white, maybe black, I mean, has chances to save it, but it's very unpleasant as well. But can go like this, then this, this, and this, and stay and wait for white to convert the advantage. Probably not that easily convertible. So kind of practical chances for black. Instead, after this, 
Uh, Anish went 95. I went 94. Certainly, it's time to exchange everything. If I take the exchange, uh, I mean, can, can't even. I mean, 95 finishes the game. So there is no way. This way of taking the exchange is just the same position as we were looking at. But here, there is 97. Takes f6. And getting the same position, but with pawn up and with uh, no compensation at all for black. So instead, I went knight c4, of course. Knight takes c4. D takes c4, as I told you, I didn't consider at all because queen c2, rook f6, d5, all this stuff. I mean, somehow he keeps it, he keeps on playing for black, but uh, well, I mean, this is very bad. I don't like it. I can't play this. I mean, so b takes c4, bishop takes c4. Not a great move. Here it's already starts to be a first mistake, maybe by Anish. Rook 7, a5 was better, keeping an eye on p5. Still not deciding the structure, because after taking on e4, now the structure is clear. f takes e4, we have all the structure, you know, settled more or less, and it's clear where everything stands here. At least you can also go this, sometimes maybe f3 somewhere, and uh, maybe knight a4, like this, and then this, and so on. Um, yeah, I think rook a5 was possible, and a good way. Instead, uh, Anish took on e4, f takes e4, and now you can see the advantage also dropped for white. Anish goes for b5, probably he saw that it's very good for him. Maybe I had to play here queen c8, maybe this move was good, not to allow exchange, because now I have also my trumps, I can bring my king, queen there on h3. I was afraid of some b6 at some point, but actually it, it was possible also in the game, so I immediately wanted to attack and uh, make him take crucial decisions. Because, for example, if here he goes for this, he can go already for... Maybe actually queen c8 is also very good here. h5, no h5 maybe. 5 h4, I like it. Very playable for black. So, yeah, I went this, but now I'm allowing the queen exchange. Mm, maybe I had to play queen c8. Let's see again, queen c8. What is it like? Mm-hmm. As you can see, it was very playable, yeah. B6, it's not in, not what white wants in general. And this, if this, oh, just finish the game. So it would be quite unclear. Some Maitinius somewhere as well. Yeah, Queen C8 was the move, of course was a very nice chance to try something. So I went rook e8, now he takes. Bishop takes, queen takes, rook takes. Mm. If rook c7, rook b3. It's fine for black. Instead, Anish went rook a2. This was also possible. Then rook b2, of course, that's why he went rook a2 actually. But... Um, yeah, so rook a2 is, uh, is okay. Rook f7, trying to exchange active rook. Not exchanging the rook, playing rook a5. Now maybe I had already the, the move rook b3. Knight d5, c3. Let's see if I had it. <laughs> maybe king g2. Now some h6. Rook c5. Takes, takes, rook c7. I don't know what is it. Is it so bad? I bring my king there. I think it's with the chances for for black. If I go this one, also looks very close to a draw. But I don't know. Maybe king of seven is the way. Rook five, king e six, five, d six maybe. Hard to say, but black has good chances as well. Uh, to save the game. Instead I went rook d7, rook c5, rook b6. Protecting everything. White had the possibility to play rook a5 here. Then they will pick up the d5 pawn. Actually I was afraid mostly of this move. But after this. But now for example if rook takes d5 then bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. Rook c6. Rook a5. C3. A1, king f7, and uh, the king is marching to c4 very fast. 
So after this, for example, this, this, and now rook b6, rook a3, rook b2, and it's uh, it's an equal position. So, okay, uh, this was possible. I was afraid mostly of this, so that maybe the same games are not draw somewhere and so on. But actually it is, so it's not that bad. So after rook b6, he went king g2, which is a nice way to play, which is just playing on. King f7, bringing the king to the defense. F3, maybe this is the kind of inaccuracy, maybe he had to play h4. Then I would have to sing, because for example, after this, maybe some knight e2, bringing the knight on f4. Um, after other moves, maybe g6, let's say, then knight e2 again, or g4 maybe, g4, h6, g5, takes, takes. Maybe slightly better for, for white again. I mean, at least it's more pleasant to play here. Still, I'm bringing my king. Maybe nothing, nothing so bad. Should be 7. Yeah, compi. As you can see, it says that it's not a huge deal here. Still, it's more pleasant, of course. DC5, knight f4 going around. This, you know, blitzes and not so much time. <clears throat> Even if it's capable, it's kind of chances for white. But this was the best. Instead, Anish went... Um, f3, I think it's not the best move here, takes, takes, rook b3, yeah. Uh, if rook c6, just rook takes c3, and comfortable draw. Rook c2, rook d6, uh, protecting the bishop. g4, trying to take space as uh, was mentioned before. g5 I could go, but uh, at first I was not sure he's going for h4 anymore, so I thought h6 is okay. h4, g5, okay, it's normal. Just takes, takes. Now there is no chance for white to win the game anymore, but I just try some last tricks to play e4. D takes king e3, just bishop d5, protecting everything, uh, not letting white uh, escape the spin on on the on the you know on the on the knight on c3. So king d2, bishop e6, king e3, bishop d5, and the game was drawn. I think it was a pretty interesting game in terms of understanding a bit the Dutch stone wall, and um, I would uh, generally suggest this opening for the players of uh, of um, uh, different levels and for the rapid and blitz games and uh, Magnus was playing it good very very good actually uh, in some games uh, he was just showing a nice class there as black uh, yeah transposing to, to this one uh, in a different fashion in in, the, in a different manner um, against top players in the world against Ananda I think against others and uh, he was playing it through, through slavs through different openings but uh, he was doing it quite interestingly and um, you can study these games of Magnus in, in generally this structure. So um, this is also an interesting opening for Rapid and Blitz because when you know what you are doing, it's very fast to develop all the pieces and know the tricks. You can try it, I think, on different levels. And uh, as you can see at the top level and also other levels, it's, uh, it's, an, it's a playable way of um, approaching the opening as black. So uh, thank you very much for watching and um, soon I will do the other game as well and uh, very happy that you're subscribing, hitting the bell button and getting all the notifications. Um, please support by commenting, by um, subscribing, uh, watching the comments. I hope you are interested and um, I'm very happy that we're growing. So uh, the community is growing and uh, makes me happy and makes me more and more excited to analyze uh, the games for the channel. Um, thinking about the streams, like the live streams for, for the uh, comments, you know, to the tournament, maybe maybe the final of the Chessable Masters, Let's think about it. And um, also thinking about making some kind of stream for the subscribers of the channel, uh, playing against... Uh, all of you actually, uh, maybe on Liches, Chesscom or Chess24, we will see which platform. So thinking about these plans and uh, we'll see how it's going on. Thank you so much once again and see you soon. Till the next video, bye bye.